All righty, welcome to the Epic Real Estate Investing Show. Got another hot episode of Mastermind Monday for you. And I say we just dive right in. You know the drill by now. I don't need to explain it. So my guests, please introduce yourself. Tell me who you are, where you're from, and what market you're in, who you help, and all that fancy stuff that you think we should know about you. Robert, why don't you start? All right. I'm Robert Seifert. I live in Tampa, Florida. Operate in the Tampa Bay market in Florida, as well as Metro Detroit, Michigan, um, which is our prime bread and butter um, where I'm from before I moved to Florida. We awesome. primarily, years up until now, did a, a turnkey business um, in Michigan, property management as well as part of that. Um, wholesale in that market, when we moved to Florida, we did Michigan virtually, and we do uh, Tampa here locally. Um, and then we just started developing some softwares um, from our business model for other investors to use. And so we primarily focus on wholesaling today and have gotten more out of the turnkey business um, just as a result of focusing. So that's, that's me. Great, great. Glad you're here. Justin. Matt, what's up? Yeah, my name is Justin Wilmot, also known as the 10 Hour Wholesaler. I'm also a Floridian like Robert, um, but I'm on the East Coast because that's where it is waved. Um, so I'm in a. <laughs> Yeah, a little, little island town called Flagler. And um, yeah, man, I started wholesaling 10 years ago. Got my start doing like HUD properties, government-owned stuff. Um, then it got heavy into fix and flip. Realized that was really not the best business model for somebody that wants to travel the world and surf all the time because I literally created a job for myself. Um, so I got back more into wholesaling, and now I just cherry-pick the good ones. And so I still redevelop and build I uh, try to primarily stick to just the more higher end things. I don't really do like the smaller cookie cutters like I used to. So, man, I'm, I still sort of do it all, uh, I guess, in the residential sector. Not much commercial. The building I'm in right now, I'm working on this one. So that's pretty cool. Fantastic. Great. So first question we always start with, and it's because it's everybody's favorite question. It's what everybody wants to know. And that is what is your best source of off-market deals at the moment? Robert. Ooh. Uh, so currently our best source is, <laughs> and has been for a long time is networking. Um, so we networking, mm. just we get deals handed to us left and right from the relationships that we've built. So it truly is our number one source outside of that. Cause some people want to have a sexier answer would be cold calling right now is dominating, um, the market for everything else that we do outside of the networking. So, um, Reverse engineer those relationships. How did you build those and how long did they take to be built? Um, so Gener one of our best relationships, yeah, gener generally speaking, it's getting out, it's networking, it's being at events, it's being at, you know, masterminds or other things like that. Um, the first relationship that we landed that was really good it took a few months to get to the point of having it. Um, it ended up being through a title company relationship, networking with them getting introduced to other people that fit our business model at the moment. And then through those introductions and a couple of dinners and just caring about the, the people turned into um, a relationship that's flourished us for four or five years now, been one of our main power buyers inside of our network. Um, and we've had several other things just like that happen. Um, and then on the deals that come to us besides just that relationship was, I think part of it is just because we, we took on property management as part of our turnkey. So we ended up having a natural relationship with our clients that way. And so they tend to ask us first when they're interested in selling a property and no longer interested in, you know, owning rentals and what comes along with that. Um, then they may have just thought they could get a check every single month, no matter what. So those relationships could have taken years, I guess, to progress to the level where they just have that much confidence and trust in us. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it's because we have some of the large buyers in our market, every other wholesaler and agent and anyone getting started generally comes to us with any deal they have. So we reject a lot of deals that way too, because a lot of mark deals, uh, but we do get a lot of great deals that way as well. Got it. So being, being a proper manager, your, your clients are other real estate investors, obviously. So you have a lot of opportunity thrown that to you that way. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And some of them are, they, they may have bought through another company. I was going to say, or they may have, you know, we may have sold to a, a big fund that then sold to them and got introduced to us by way of that relationship. And then, yeah, we become mm -hmm. the trusted source for them because we know the market. 
Right. And then for the, the wholesalers in the area and other people bringing you deals, you've developed probably a reputation for being able to, you've got money and you're able to close and they know they can get paid. So you're kind of their first option there as well. Yeah. They know either we're going to close or someone that we work with is going to close on it immediately. And we'll tell them within a couple of days for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. So I was just, I was just kind of like narrowing it in, like just having a, a quick or excuse me, um, a, a reputation for being a problem solver for the person that you want to attract. So people with properties and they want to get paid and they want to take that shortest path. And, and so I uh, just wanted to kind of outline that because I, I really believe that, you know, the relationships are, you know, to this day, I mean, we don't out of eight markets, we only actually actively market with direct mail and, and digital just because I want to stay on top of things really not because I need to, mm-hmm. um, but the rest of his relationships, like we have almost no marketing spend at all if we didn't want to have it. Right. So good yep. relationships. I say direct mail and PPC. If you want to go fast relationships, if you want to go far, that's my, uh, my motto there. Awesome. Thanks, like Robert. Justin best source of off market deals for you at the moment when you're surfing. <laughs> I just got out of water too. So my hair's a little bit, but, um, that's why I'm drinking so much water, so excuse me. Um, but one of the unsexy answer that some of the newer people is not going to like to hear, which is the same as Robert, um, mine is my network, but it's my agent network. So everybody in town, everybody in the market, so I've actually, through time, we just cultivate relationships, right? I mean, that's what happens when you build a reputation for closing deals and buying distressed stuff. And everyone's like, hey, I call it Justin, and they close in four days with this problem like property. And we're just spreads. That's just the way it works. So that's the unsexy answer, right? Because that takes some, some, some time and some energy to do and build and cultivate. So the next best thing that's literally, though, like right now, when I would say for the past 12 months, neck and neck with that method, um, believe it or not, it's what I call field managers. Other people call them property scouts, bird dogs, whatever. Um, but field, field managers. So I'm just having people drive neighborhoods looking for anything that looks distressed. And, and it doesn't need to be ugly as heck. I'm, I'm saying like any little sign of distress, like it could be 16, uh, like it could be in good condition, but 16 newspapers still sitting at the front door. Uh, I'm having them mark that property. And then we hit them with a forced tier system. We're cold calling them, texting, ringless voicemail and direct mail. So that's right. my, that's my best. And it's a lot of work to, to get those in, but hey, it works. Sure. So what is your source for finding those types of field managers, you call them? Yeah, field managers. I like that name. I never liked bird dogs, so I'm going to use field managers. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I made a note. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, my theory, I call them that because I, what I try to do is like actually make them a part of our team. And I don't really just say, hey, go look for houses and then go away and flip them away. I try to like keep them really part of the company so that I don't have so much turnover. Because I used to, you know, when I learned property scouts and bird dogs, it was just like constantly posting ads and constantly trying to get this new person. So now what I do is I go to like college kids and you know, there's a local university. I'm sorry. Actually, it's just a community college. Um, and I ask them, hey, man, you want to make a couple hundred bucks? And then I really just try to cultivate them, give them a little bit of our culture here, and try to keep them more involved, give them a cooler name, and uh, tell them what to do. And they do it. <laughs> and they do it. And uh, I tell you, it, it really, really works. Um, and then also, now again, this is unique to me. I just thought of this, Matt, as I was telling this. Um, I have a couple renovations right now that I got specifically from other contractors. And it's only because of all the storms that just came through, the hurricanes. There's just so much repairs um, that there was sellers. And, and what I did is, and I had my boyfriend do, is tell everybody in town, all the contractors, all the handyman, we cold called them and said, hey, we buy properties. If you and us get in this lead and we buy a property from you, we'll give you $1,000 cash. And so that's what we've done. Yep. Best yeah, way so to motivate right. is to compensate. Yeah, compensate right yeah. off. <laughs> Sweet. Um, so let me ask you, Robert, what trend are you seeing in your business or your market that has you concerned or maybe excited? And how is it changing the way you operate? Ooh, that one's a little bit more challenging. Um, <laughs> really, the only, the only trend or changes that I see is just the way people are marketing. I see a lot of people running away from direct mail right now. Um, just because they say it doesn't work, but the reality is, and I think that most of those people, um, they're just not running their business from KPI. So this, to me, that's exciting in a sense that um, it's an opportunity to teach or, or have those people bring deals to you. 
because they don't they don't understand marketing, they don't understand running a business, they're not looking at KPIs, um, etc. So it's just another opportunity to develop more more um, relationships with people that are going to bring us more deals without us spending marketing money, um, which is a great thing. And then from the other side, I, I am noticing um, not so much in our markets. I don't feel it yet, uh, but I hear it in some of the other groups that I'm in that you know the, the market's kind of hit that point where the value is not going up anymore getting harder for them to, to get the deals at the right price. Um, I haven't seen that in our markets yet. And, and some of the, the big companies coming in the open or offer pads and et cetera. Again, I haven't seen the effect, but we also focus on houses that are under 200,000 and mm-hmm. their, their models more higher. So it doesn't really affect it us. Right. You know, they, uh, it is kind of like, running through not the rumor mill is not what I'm looking for, but kind of the, the chitter chatter is about this shifting market. Right. And, Oh, it, mm-hmm. it stinks and doomsday and da, 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 da. I mean, I, I kind of look at like, how much do you think that's real? How much do you think that's just the stories and excuses people are making for themselves? Yeah, I agree with that. But, I mean, so many people do that, right. They just make stories all the time. And it's what you tell yourself that becomes your own truth and reality. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I agree. I hear the chitter chatter but I haven't noticed the difference in our market as far as that goes. Right. And you said, uh, everyone's saying that the direct mail doesn't work anymore. And I'm just like, yeah. this is the time to double down. You're right. It doesn't work. Don't do it anymore. I'll take care of it. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Very good. Um, Justin, what system or technology have you implemented in the last 12 months? That's had the, the biggest impact on your business and how, you might have already said it, but yeah, well, yeah, driving for dollars apps, you know, I, I'm not going to plug just one specific one, but there is one called driving for dollars app, which is pretty cool. Um, mm-hmm. and the deal machine app, the deal machine app is really something that we've been working with. It's a killer one. Um, but that's a real simple piece of technology. And, um, did, I, did you ask me the same question or just that one? Yeah, I, was, I meant to ask you the same question, but I misread my my questions here. So I'll give you a stab at the other one, too. I can tell you're prepared to answer the other one. I was like, sweet. Bad host, bad host. Right. <laughs> I thought I got away with it. I was like, sweet. Because I, I, it's funny because um, I actually am experiencing all of the, uh, um, So I am experiencing higher days on market in Florida on the East Coast. And I, I, I know Tampa. We got some people in Tampa. I just did a deal in Tampa. And um, it's... It is cranking hot over there. Um, but for my renovations, we got higher days on market for sure. So that's the biggest obstacle that we're facing at the moment. Mm-hmm. So it's a bigger obstacle if, you know, in my opinion, days on market is a little bit more of a retail stat. Yeah. And it's it's going to be a big deal if you're fixing and flipping to retail consumers, right? right, right. Um, I see it as an amazing opportunity to show sellers Hey, if things aren't selling like they used to, your house isn't quite worth what it used to be. The market says so. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great negotiating tool for what we do. Yep, totally. Yep. Yeah. Hundred yeah, percent. Awesome. The glass is uh, in, in Matt's world. Yeah, I just, I, I love it. I mean, when things are selling really fast, it really kind of limits a lot of the the creative acquisitions and creative exit strategies that have been so successful in, in just darn near every other market. But when people are willing to pay cash and they're willing to overpay, you know, it, it puts you, it kind of handcuffs you a little bit with what you have access to in your toolbox. Yeah. And so when I see a, a market like this and it's softening a little bit, it's still a seller's market, right? It's just not as strong as it was, you know, 90 days ago, maybe, but um it's just unique. Mine's more of a vacation. It's a barrier island, so it's more of like second home vacation. You know, so it's. it's a- mm-hmm. Well, I you know I totally spaced out when you said where you were. Where are you, Justin? What market? Flagler Beach. So it's just south. Of oh, you said on the east side of Florida, right? Yeah, east coast of Florida, yeah. um, so where the waves are. Yeah. I remember now. <laughs> Couldn't do that. Um, cool. Awesome. So you had mentioned, uh, and this has come up more than more, more than once. Um, I think the the technologies that are out there, as far as the apps go, the driving for dollar apps, there's a few of them out there and people are, are squaring by them. It's really making it an efficient process and it's bringing back one of the very, gosh, one of the oldest methods there is to finding motivated sellers is driving neighborhoods. 
Right. And uh, it's really maximizing that. What type of results are you seeing from it or what's been your experience with those? Well, I mean, I can have one field manager get me about 200 to 300 leads in about three to four days. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they bust their butt. Um, and then what we do is we just attack the heck out of that list and we focus on the list, right? So that's why I said I got that free tier system. And so mm -hmm. instead of like constantly looking for other lead lists and send them to absentees and vacants like everybody else is, we're just going ham on the list that we have. And uh, that's been building results. Got it. So you're kind of creating your own list then? Literally creating our own yeah. list. Yep. The list that you can't buy is what I tell my students and stuff. I'm like, get the list that you can't buy. You know? Yep. Yep. I agree. Those are the, the best ones. Um, Robert, is yeah. anything uh, impactful happening over there technology wise or system wise in the last 12 months for you? Yeah, we actually uh, have developed two software. So we both of them changed our business and were built for our business. And one was a partnership with another uh, mastermind guy to improve in his business. But both of them have been game changers and um, something that we're actively releasing in the market. So one is on the beginning stage when it comes to lists is a, a list stacking software that we built called Property List Manager that essentially takes all of your data and cleans it all up stacks all the different types of lists that you have against each other. So instead of mailing, you know, 100,000 people, for instance, you're identifying the 10,000 with the most pain and removing all your duplication. So it just saves a tremendous amount on marketing. Think of it like um, giving you the ability to have a sniper scope in on your market and not wasting any dollars on any type of marketing you're doing. What, whatever you're going to do with it, even if it's not direct mail, you at least get your data dialed in first. Uh, but I really love the driving for dollars. We don't do that. That's definitely a nice way to create your own list. And then the next one, once you've done your marketing, is we built a CRM that is truly automated. Um, we, just, we didn't like anything that was on the market from the CRM standpoint. Every time we got one, it didn't do what it said it did unless you connected three or four other tools to it. So we built a true all-in-one. Um, and it's literally focused on relationships. So it's really the secret sauce behind how we continue to develop our relationships because we have – emails, text messages, phone messages, postcards that all go out in a drip sequence, tracked and KPI'd to every lead type, every contact type within our system. So we're even, I'll give you buyers, for example, we're constantly on their mind, even in between deals. So they don't just get deals from us, they get messages from us building a relationship over the course of the year. And all that's automated by our CRM. So that, that's been a huge game changer. We literally Using that tool and all the automation we created in it, we got rid of three VAs and saved ourselves about four grand a month in overhead. So that was that was really nice. Ah, that's oh, always, always nice. nice. Four grand a month. Yeah, <laughs> that'll yeah, pay. For it was some, a nice saving. Thanks for something. <laughs> nice. And what do you call it? Investor PO. Sorry, Investor PO. Investor. Oh, okay. I think um, Brandon Middleton is using that. Is he? He very much so is. He's been with us since we launched our beta and he's there one of go. our biggest uh, proponents of it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, he was here um, speaking very highly of it. Fantastic. Congrats. And, and the lead stacker thing, um, I've, I don't know how many times I've Googled YouTube trying to figure out how to combine lists and, and scrub them like that. But now you've got something for it, so I don't have to do that anymore. So great. Yeah. We'll talk more about that in a, in a minute. Um, let me ask you uh, – most people like to ask, what's the biggest mistake that you've made and what did you learn from it? But I like to ask, what's the biggest win that you've made in the last 12 months? What have you learned from it? Justin, your biggest win in the last 12 months. Last 12 months. You know what, dude? It was a mind, I don't know, it sounds kind of cliche, but it was a mindset shift for me. And um, I just hit 30, 34. And uh, dude, hold on, man. Things got so much more clear for me this year. Um, and I've just really systematized and delegated and added team members more than ever in my life. Um, and my quality of life just continues to sort of go up from there. And um, that was one of the best things I've done. So like, dude, I I've really added a lot of people to my business, probably overboard. And, uh, <laughs> but just my quality of life is just so much better. And so that was a big thing. It's just expanding my team, expanding my team and uh, just made life a lot easier. Spend a time, just creating a processes. Like I use Loom or Jing to like record our processes of what, how we do it, what we do it. And then just creating a little digital manual and getting good people and you know, good people. That was probably the key word. Good people. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, I think uh, you're the first person to say that. And that's the one thing I probably have in common with you is giving up the, 
I have to do everything. I have to have, I have to be in control of everything. Just, well, you, you know, you given. Either? I thought we had that. Yeah, that you don't surf? Yeah. I thought we had that in common. <laughs> oh no, I don't surf. No, I, I know I'm from California and Newport Beach. Even <laughs> I never took to that. Uh, I can skateboard a little bit, but uh, anyway, yeah, no, that was probably the, the biggest win for me in the last twelve months, and I haven't even shared that on the show. But you just brought it to attention. Was uh, I just kind of gave up control and I empowered people to go out and do what they want to do and what they like to do. And gosh, I think my team and everything that they specialize in is now better at that than I am. So that's a, it's been a liberating experience. Dude, how liberating, man. It just feels so good, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. It's like, you know, I produce a podcast and I, I work my investments now. That's it. Like all that other stuff is done. It's just, it's just beautiful. I don't have to talk to property managers anymore. I got one person that manages property managers for me. So it's like, it's just fantastic. Thank you. Totally. Robert, what's your biggest win in the last 12 months? And what did you find most valuable about it? So pretty, I'm going to come similar to Justin. My biggest win was the birth of my son and what it did for me in business. Um, mm -hmm. And so th there's a long story behind the son. So that was actually a huge win in, in and of itself. But what it created was I found myself becoming more chaotic in business again, due to building the softwares and taking on a couple more businesses. Um, his birth helped me focus really quick on what's important, and that's your life and what you got all this started for. And so this year, we've literally went, uh, we got rid of our property management company. I think we're, we're down to our just paying out our owner's final statements finally after several months of going through a process to do that all year. We stopped renovating every house that we did. Um, and all of it was just so I could focus on software and still make money in real estate, but, um, you know, doing all those other things, the prop running the property management business and running renovations, as Justin said earlier, is that's, I can't travel around the world and do things with my new son that I want to do on a daily basis and do that. Um, so I let go of all of those things and we struck deals instead, you know, Hey, if we'll, we'll send all of our buyers, they can still get turnkey inventory because we're not great. Um, so it's no time suck. We'll just wholesale all the deals that we have coming in our pipeline. And most of those come from networking. So we spend very little in marketing today. Um, and yeah, the birth of, birth of him caused, I will say, caused that chain reaction of uh, it's time to focus. Let's give it all the noise. That's great. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Thank you. So he's uh, he's less than a year then? He's just how old? Yeah, he'd be, he'd be uh, he's 10 and a half months. So it'll be 11 months in a couple weeks. Is this your first? I have a way older son that's, well, well 22 yesterday. I was oh, in wow. in Virginia. So first in a long time. I've got a, I've got a friend experience. who had, I've got a friend who has a, a child in the one in the last three decades. So he's got him spread way out as well. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All under five. Yeah. Justin, what's your family look like? I got a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a one-year-old. Oh, we're Ooh. all busy. We're all busy. Yeah. You're staying busy, man. I always tell everybody, like, my, sometimes family, they're like, man, where you been? You know, I'm like, I got three companies and three kids. So I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> 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 right. You know, I'm surfing all my free moments in between that. Like, right now, it's unbelievably good. I had to choose between something. I had chose surfing, so I'm probably going to get in trouble. <laughs> well, we won't tell. Um, no, no one's listening anyway. Um, real quick, uh, what's the, um, Robert, what's the best book you've read in the last 12 months and what did you find most valuable about it? Ooh, okay. Well, if we narrow it down to the last 12 months only, then it would be, um, Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. And I've read a lot of his other stuff. Mm. I thought it was great. I read a lot of other books, but it was the first time I ever read that book. And I did the audio as well, which I would highly recommend um, in this case specifically for that book. And what I got out of it, um, it really just came down to focus um, in a sense. And what I mean by that is not just focus, but being very crystal clear about what it is you want out of life. Because if you're not, you will get taken all over the place. And, that's, and most of us are put in, as the book breaks down, um, from birth. And the way we're raised through the school process and some of the other things that we just go through, um, where they, they call it drifting. 
you, you start a, a trend of drifting in your life and drifting in all your decisions, and it's because you're not you're not clear at all about what you want. It's hard to make a decision. So the, that was that was huge. I was that, did it three times in that book this year. Huh? Was that Sharon Lecter's? Yeah, she did. Uh, it's his book, but she was the one that was allowed to release it, and she added her notes to it because he actually wrote it back at the time of Think and Grow Rich, but it came out in 2011. Right, right, You're right. No, I read it when it was a brand new release, and mm-hmm. I, I couldn't make my way through the audio. It was so difficult for me to listen, and but it is. and so I threw it away, and I was like, okay, move on to the next book. But you're probably like, I mean, the seventh or eighth person in the last year that has mentioned that as one of their more impactful books they've ever read. So I'm going to have to give that another shot. Wow. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. It's affected a lot. I mean, it's it's got me sitting here thinking on decisions on how my my son's going to go to school or not and the the path he's going to take. Just that book affected all of that. Right, right. Yeah, she's been a big, um, you know, proponent with, uh, or was, I don't know if they're friends anymore, but with Kiyosaki and, and the financial education and the schools and stuff like that. So yeah, great. Yeah. Just, Justin, what's the uh, best book you read in the last 12 months? What'd you find most valuable about it? Dude, so look, man, I gotta be honest. I'm not a big reader, which is mm-hmm. a little crazy. <clears throat> I'm a big on action taking, which is, you know, what I contribute to probably where I've gotten, to where I've gotten today. So I'm just being super honest. Um, I've probably only read about five books so far this year. And one of them is the same book that I read every single year because I consider it like my entrepreneurial Bible. And this was definitely not going to be original for you, but it's how to win friends and influence people. Ah, classic. I read it every single year. Book. Every year. Um, and I literally have it on my nightstand and my wife moves it around, puts it in my drawer sometimes. I take it and put it back out there. Because whenever I have an extra few minutes, right before bed or whatever, I'll pop it open and just reread stuff. And then, uh, every time I read it, it just re-triggers and uh, dude, it helps my life so much better, especially like with what we were just talking about with building my team members and such. Like, I just feel like I can communicate better um, and provide my vision and dream, which helps people. And uh, dude, I've just learned so much from that book and it's sort of like my entrepreneurship. Type of so I just yep. I've read a bunch of, you know, other like, random stuff. I get like a quarter mm-hmm. ways to do. I never complete them. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, you read it you, once a year, and I have a book like this. I'm, I actually don't talk this much on these mastermind sessions. I let the guests do the talking, but I actually have a lot in common with both of you, so I just feel compelled to share. Um, but why do you read that book once a year? Like, what does it do for you each year? Uh, just like I said, every year, dude, something new comes out of it that I have an, it's, it's odd. I have an epiphany every time I read the same chapter over and over again, like, I, you know, I can intrinsically understand it, but when you really get it because a life event happened, then all, as you're reading through the same chapter, all of a sudden, a life event that might have happened two months ago, boom, it all of a sudden that chapter meant something more to me. Mm-hmm. And so, um, dude, I just, whether it's be a better, a, a better listener or reminding myself to smile more when I'm in conversation or, um, man, Last chapter on the sex appeal, dude. Using your sexual powers to persuade. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Andy, um, dude, from everything, man. It's just it's a constant reminder because my personal opinion, Matt, is that like for me anyway. This is this is my reality, dude. I've only built what I've built because of relationships. Like, there's always been a person behind everything that's ever happened in me, in business, and life, and that's probably why I have three kids too, right? <laughs> so you know, that's right yeah man so for me i'm all in on relationships and um that's why this to me is my like personal like just it's like the entrepreneurship bible for me like this is what mm-hmm. i outside of you know, religion. that's great that's great right yeah the um this is mine awaken the giant within if you can see that dude mm. I, I read this once a year for the last decade this is actually the first year i haven't read it and uh i I only got a little bit of time left in the year to, to complete that. Have you read his Money Mastery one yet? Or is, is that what um, it's, it's sitting yeah. on my nightstand, but I haven't opened it up yet. My mom bought it for me for last year for Christmas. And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I just read it because, and kind of what you said, like I'm a different person every time I read this book. And like I, it transformed me when I read it. And then it turned me into a different person. I applied what I've learned in there. 
And I come back and I read something else and it means something totally different to me or something I to totally missed, totally didn't catch the first time. Dude, epic, dude. That's, that's what I'm talking about. That for me, yep. dude, I've read so many, uh, so many books, especially as a young person, like, uh, you know, when I first got started and, uh, and I forget so much out of the books. So I just made the personal decision. Uh, one day I said, dude, I'm just going to master a handful of books. Uh, I'm just going to master them. And I'm going to just redundant, redundant, redundancy. So that's been, mm -hmm. that's great. That's great. Justin, what's in your future that has you most excited and why? Um, well, right now I'm in what we call the dungeon or the AKA the studio, but right now this is a commercial building, three, uh, two more stories up. Um, and, uh, I am restructuring and, uh, just, I, I have the contract on this property and uh redeveloping this and this is exciting because i'm literally if you could if i could turn the computer around i'm on the beach so i'm in one of the most prime pieces of real estate on the east coast of florida and i'm right next to which just got voted the uh number one best beach bar in all east coast of the united states of america it's just an epic piece of land excited with the redevelopment that we're about to do to it and um i'm looking forward to it's gonna suck while we're building it because we're all gonna be downstairs here. Um, but I'm adding, uh, going maxing out to four stories, and uh, this is an exciting project for me. I, it's really exciting because it's new, unique. It's gonna be a really cool, iconic building in on the beach. And uh, dude, I, I'm looking for just everyone driving by and be like, that is beautiful. And so if, to me, it's different. I've, flipped, I've fixed and flipped so many properties, renovated so many properties, and you know how it is, dude. You just get it just becomes redundant and unemotional. Um, so mm -hmm. this. Is so this is cool. I'm looking forward to it. Great. You had me at beach and bar though, by the way. So I'm going to have to come check it out. <laughs> uh, Robert, what's the, uh, uh, what's in your future that has you most excited and why? It is our CRM. Um, hmm. it's just, I can tell. it is, I never got into real estate, obviously to build a software. Um, we built it for ourselves and just now knowing where it's headed because it took off. Um, and now we're about to release the, uh, I'm very excited because we're about to release the newest evolution. Our members have it, but outside world doesn't even know about it yet. And it, mm -hmm. it's, it's an overhaul. There's nothing that compares. And then just the, the where it's headed, right? So it, it's, it's become our, now that I understand software and I've hired a mentor for it and went all into software. I truly, from a, from a, uh, the long game perspective and monthly mm -hmm. recurring passive income, there's, there's nothing that can compare to it. So it's going to life change myself, my family, and my okay. newborn son. So. Your mentor, not Dan Martell by chance, is it? It is. It is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm hanging out with Dan all weekend, so I'll see him tomorrow. Yeah. He's great. He's awesome. Tell him I said yeah. hi. Yeah. I can. Yeah. He has a, an impact on the people he, that he works with. So uh, he's phenomenal. Perfect. I'll tell him you said hello. So if someone wanted to get in touch with you, learn more about your software, or just get in touch with you, what would be the best way for them to do that? The uh, best way to reach me is robert at investorpo.com. All right. Pretty simple, straightforward. Good. Yeah. Uh, Justin, if someone wanted to reach out and get in touch with you, what would be the best way for them to do that? Super simple. Just go to justinwilmot.com. It's Justin, W I L M O T.com. And then you can follow me there through all my social media watch some cool episodes that we have of us flipping, flipping houses and stuff. We got this cool episode series that we're doing called the freedom air. And then you can check out our movement that we have called freedom moguls. And it's an online virtual mastermind where we're just helping empower people. And I'm showing people how to, how, how I do business now where I'm just leveraging and delegating a lot of virtual assistants. And so it's just more about a lifestyle. I'm definitely not the guy here going, let me show you how to make a million bucks. Cause I just don't really care. I, I just want people to have the money that they need in the bank account to live their current life and to live the dream lifestyle that they want. And so I personally help people on a daily, weekly basis in this Freedom Moguls movement doing that. So. That's fantastic. Right. Great. Well, everybody, thanks for participating. Uh, let's check back in in 2019. We'll do it again. Yeah, we would love to. Absolutely. Man. Sounds good. Awesome. All right. Super. Alrighty, so if y'all want to do deals, y'all want to build wealth, stay tuned right here. We are here six days a week. If you want to go fast, go to reiace.com. I'll see you next week. Take care. Hey, Superstar, if you like what you just saw, I've got a lot more where that came from. Hit the like button and then ring that bell so that you never miss an episode. And then after you've done that, check out this next video. I set this aside just for you. I'll see you soon.